In a house there lived a middle-aged couple. The husband is George Vickers and his wife is Sandra. They lived happily in their old age without worrying about their finances. They had been told by their son that he would come to visit them when he finished his duty in Afghanistan. One day, in the city, a group of gangsters was seen carrying out a mission to rob a woman who was doing a transaction in a bank. They had been observing the woman and knew that she often left the bank with a large amount of cash for the last few weeks. This target was a not-to-miss target for them. After she came out of the bank, she immediately went into her car and left the place. She was not aware of the gangsters who had been spying on her and following her car. When she passed under a flyover, the robbers intercepted her car and dragged her out of the car. They asked for the money she took from the bank earlier. Coincidentally, George who passed the same road witnessed the scene and decided to save her. When he got out of his car, one of the robbers yelled at him and told him not to intervene in their affairs, but George didn't budge. The robbers suddenly beat his arm with a bat, but George replied it with his fist and knocked him on the road. He then grabbed the bat and when the robber got up, he knocked him dead with the bat in the head. Not long after that, a police siren was heard and the robbers were forced to flee from there. Before they ran away, one of them threatened Gurge. When the police came to the scene and saw the dead robber, they arrested George despite being a hero. Meanwhile, the robbers who managed to escape arrived at their headquarters, a gangster headquarters led by a man named Warren. He was shocked when he found out that his man had failed to carry out their robbery mission, and even more, his brother was killed during the mission. That night, four gangsters consisting of Warren, Danny, Rob, and Leon came to George's house. After successfully finding the address where George lived, they immediately raided the house, and that night, they murdered George and his wife by burning them to death. I'm gonna let you say goodbye to her. I'll turn the heat on. <laughs> Jimmy, George's son who just arrived from Afghanistan, was devastated after hearing the news of his parents' death which was considered very unnatural to him. In the apartment, he received a voice message from his best friend, Griff, who was a policeman that handled Jimmy's parents. He promised to thoroughly investigate the case and look for the culprit. Amidst the stress, Jimmy decided to go to a bar nearby his parents' house. He ordered a drink and then asked a bartender named Terry, whom he considered to have definitely known about the chronology of events and also the culprit who had taken the lives of his parents, but unfortunately, Terry, who did not want to take the risk, also tried to lie by covering up all the information, pretending that he did not know anything about the incident. Unsatisfied with the answer he got made him angry. He caused a ruckus and forced Terry to finally told everything by saying that at the time of the incident, he had heard Jimmy's parents screaming from the back window, and not long after he saw four men come out of the house in a fire which started to devour the whole house. At that time Terry was afraid to deal with them and couldn't do anything but called the fire department. After he was filled with information, he left the place and went to his parents' house. When Jimmy entered the house, he found the furniture. The side of the house was destroyed and burned. Without being able to shed tears, he found a photo of him together with his late father and mother. Suddenly his friends Griff came to see him. He informed him about the suspects who had killed both of their parents, but Griff was not sure since they all used masks when they raided the house, so he couldn't identify them yet. The next morning, after visiting his parents' graves, Jimmy tried to calm down by visiting a church. Not long after, Jimmy's wife named Morgan came there. She asked Jimmy to go home because he was worried and concerned about him, but he coldly welcomed her invitation. He looked unwelcoming since their relationship was problematic at that time. Jimmy later visited a cafe and ordered a cup of coffee. When he was sitting there, he saw two suspicious men spying on him. Suddenly, he received a phone call and turned out, it was Griff. He then met him. Griff told him some information about a man who owned a black BMW named Warren. He also gave Jimmy a flash disk containing security camera footage from the night of the incident. Jimmy, who at that time was being overcome by anger went to an address that he got from Griff. In a fitness location, Warren had just finished exercising at that time. He then went out and immediately got into his car but he was shocked when suddenly his car was hit from behind which made him angry. When he confronted the driver behind him, it turned out to be Jimmy. He beat Warren and covered his face with a black plastic bag. After the black plastic covering his face was removed, Warren got scared when he found his body was already tied to the car seat. Jimmy asked him to write the name of the other culprit that raided his parents' house with Warren that night. He promised to let him go after he did that, but when he finished writing all the names, driven by anger, Jimmy burned Warren in his car to death. You give me the names and you live. 
After he killed Warren, Jimmy decided to go to Morgan's house, his wife. There, the tension that had occurred between them finally started to get better. Morgan accidentally saw a wound on Jimmy's stomach. When Morgan stitched the wound, Jimmy saw their divorce application letter which at that time was lying on the table. Jimmy once sued to divorce his wife but now, he was sued by his wife. An awkward atmosphere ensued between them so Jimmy, trying to avoid the awkwardness, immediately said goodbye to his wife and left that place. Morgan, who had been missing her husband for so long, ran after him. That night, they ended up sleeping together. In the morning, police came to the place where Warren was found dead, along with some journalists trying to report the news there. Unexpectedly, Rob, who was one of the gangsters who raided Jimmy's parents' house was there. He couldn't accept Warren's death, decided to tell Leon about it. When the night fell, driven by their suspicion of one of their friends, Caleb, they decided to confront him. They went to Caleb's house, but when Rob was about to shoot Caleb, Caleb's girlfriend came with a shotgun and forced them to leave. Before that, Caleb also managed to convince them that he was not the culprit behind Warren's murder. That morning, Jimmy was curious about the contents of the flash drive that Griff gave him some time ago. He then checked the content. In the evening, Jimmy, who already knew the names of the four culprits, immediately met Griff. He asked Griff to find out the address of the men who were suspected of killing his parents, but Griff knew that Jimmy's actions had gone too far, like what he did to Warren. He asked Jimmy to stop his act of revenge and hand over the task to the police, but Jimmy still insisted that he did not accept his parents' death in such a very inhuman way. He couldn't simply let the culprits be punished by sentencing them to prison. Sometime later, Griff handled a case of robbery and murder of a man by trying to ask the wife of the victim about the characteristics of the culprits, but unfortunately, the woman said that she did not remember the faces of the culprits, because, at that time, the incident happened so quickly. Not long after, Detective Holland came. Griff reported the case to Holland hoping to get direction from the detective. But instead of giving a solution, Holland easily underestimated the murder case by telling Griff that the case was just an ordinary robbery and the wife of the victim would be happy to get the insurance money from her husband's death. Griff looked very disappointed with Holland's response. Meanwhile, in a fancy restaurant, Jimmy met a man named Hanny, one of his friends that had some connections with illegal gun dealers. His purpose in meeting Hanny was none other than to ask for Hanny's help to get weapons. Hanny then took him to one of the dealers. When they got there, the only weapon that Jimmy picked was a handgun with a silencer. At night, Jimmy continued his mission to eliminate his parents' killer. He spied on one of the culprits named Danny who went to a bar to meet one of his friends, Rob. At the bar, Danny went to the toilet. But without him knowing, Jimmy was already there, standing behind him with a mask to cover his face. Danny was then beaten unconscious. When he regained consciousness, he immediately realized that he was being held captive by Jimmy. At the moment, Danny didn't even know who Jimmy was. When Jimmy told him that he would die that night, he was very scared. He didn't even know what problem he was facing at that moment. Rob felt something was wrong because Danny took too long in the toilet. He then called him but was surprised when he found out that Jimmy was the one who picked up the call. On the call, Jimmy threatened that he would kill Danny and soon would come to find Rob himself. After the call finished, Jimmy mixed some cement in front of Danny. Danny begged for mercy but Jimmy, who was driven by his anger and revenge, gave no mercy. He then poured the cement mix into Danny's mouth and left him there. In the morning, the police officers came to investigate the crime scene. They found Danny's dead body with his mouth filled with hardened cement. Finding this rare case made Holland take over the investigation. He was very enthusiastic about the case, hoping to get a promotion from his investigation. After his investigation at the crime scene, Holland continued the investigation by visiting Terry's bar where a day before, Terry had previously called the police to come to his bar to check the surveillance camera in his bar. He did that because he was starting to get restless with the activities of gangsters, which often happened recently. At that time, Holland saw the footage and when he paused and enlarged the footage, he realized that it was Jimmy. The next morning, when Jimmy passed in front of his apartment, he was surprised by some police in front of the apartment. He decided to stop at his wife's house instead. The police, who couldn't find Jimmy in his apartment then visited Morgan's place to inform her about her husband who was suspected of serial murder. Morgan looked so angry when she found out about it. The next morning, Jimmy tried to calm Morgan down. He said that after he finished his business, he promised to bring her with him and left from there to start a new life. He then left her to go to a supermarket, only to find several police officers searching for him. He then left from the back door, 
but two police officers stopped him and recognized his face. Suddenly two men came and beat the police officers. It turned out that the men were sent by his leader when he served in Afghanistan namely Colonel Leach. Somewhere else, Griff met one of Jimmy's former colleagues when serving in Afghanistan named James. Griff had found out that Holland had ordered James to arrest Jimmy. Griff then convinced James not to arrest him and to let him finish his revenge because if Jimmy was arrested, Holland would get a promotion and that would taint the reputation of the police department. One night in a strip club, Leon was enjoying his night when suddenly, one of the strippers there approached him and gave him an envelope containing Danny's picture. At that moment, he saw Jimmy who sat at one of the tables there. He was so scared he started running away. Jimmy managed to chase him and beat his consciousness. When he woke up, he found himself tied to the wall and the back of the car. He cried and begged for forgiveness for what he had done to Jimmy's parents but Jimmy didn't care about it. He then turned the car engine and stepped on the gas. Leon's body was torn apart by the force of the car and instantly dead. The next day, Holland visited a restaurant for lunch. Not long after, Colonel Leach approached him and tried to talk to him, but Holland, who did not know who Colonel Leach was, ignored him. But even so, Colonel Leach kept talking to him. He then told Holland about Jimmy, an elite force who served in Afghanistan. He was known for his combat ability and was feared on the battlefield, even by the Taliban. The story ended with a warning for Holland where Colonel Leach said to never get in Jimmy's way. Unfortunately, Holland didn't care about the warning. The ambition to get a promotion made had blinded him. In another place, a meeting between the chiefs of the police department. In the middle of a meeting, the leader of the meeting named Commander Carter asked the police department to hand over Jimmy's case documents and then issued an order to delete the case because Jimmy was identified as a member of the elite troops whose combat skills were still needed by the country. Carter planned to draft Jimmy into the SAS, the Special Air Service, an elite force in England. That night, Rob was walking back to his apartment when suddenly, in the middle of the road, Jimmy, who had been watching him, appeared. He was shocked when Jimmy suddenly appeared and pointed a gun straight at his face. Jimmy forced him to enter Caleb's apartment and was used as a living shield to kill Caleb and his men inside. After successfully capturing Caleb and killing his men, Jimmy used acid to finish off Caleb. Caleb offered Jimmy the money he had in exchange to release him, but Jimmy didn't care about it. He dissolved the money in the acid and poured the acid on Caleb's head which ended up killing him. <laughs> Meanwhile, Detective Holland called Griff to come into his office and suspected him of helping Jimmy in his crime. He forced Griff to tell him the rest of Jimmy's targets but Griff persisted in not telling him at all. Griff's response made him angry and decided to discharge Griff from Jimmy's case. At that very moment, Holland rushed to see Rob in the hospital and ordered him to search for evidence to accuse Jimmy. Rob then went to Jimmy's place and found an envelope with an address written on it. When he was about to leave the place, he was surprised by Jimmy in the back seat of his car. Jimmy asked him to keep driving and not long after, they arrived in an empty parking lot. When Jimmy was about to inject a chemical to kill Rob, Rob told him to open the trunk of the car, saying he had something inside for Jimmy. When he opened the trunk, he found his wife's dead body inside. He was furious when he, once again, found his loved ones dead. He was full of anger and pulled the trigger of his gun. He ended up killing Rob by shooting his body a couple of times. Not long after, the police led by Holland arrived at the scene. They pointed their gun at Jimmy. At the same time, Griff arrived there and was shocked to see Morgan's dead body in the car trunk. Griff felt that Holland was the mastermind behind the chaos by releasing Rob from the hospital to lure Jimmy out of hiding, but ended up killing Morgan in the process. Hearing that, all the police officers were angry with Holland's cunningness and decided to let Jimmy leave the scene. Holland didn't let Jimmy leave. Driven by his ambition for a promotion, he tried to stop Jimmy by himself, but he ended up beaten by Jimmy. A few days after the incident, one night, a pregnant woman was seen throwing garbage in an alley where she was immediately approached by two thugs. Suddenly, Jimmy showed up in front of them. The thugs yelled at him to flee and not interfere with their business but instead of leaving, Jimmy approached them and smiled with a vicious look. <laughs> 